chaos. Capital chaos. Capital chaos. Capital chaos TV. Hi, this is Ann Pirate. I'm with Capital Chaos TV at Vans Warp Tour, and I am sitting with Palais Royale. I'm very excited to talk with these guys. Um, they've been doing this for a long time, but this is our first opportunity to pick their brain. I'm going to have them tell the, you their name and what they do with the band. Hello there. My name is Emerson. I'm the drummer. Hi, I'm Remington, and I'm the singer. Hi, I'm Sebastian, and I'm the guitar player. So We are Palais Royale. We're a rock and roll band from L.A. Very rock and roll, very rock and roll. Palais Royale, you guys have been doing this for many years. You've been playing music. This isn't your first beer, but you decided recently in June of this year that you guys were going to do your debut album, which was the Boom Boom Room. And I understand that you recorded that in three weeks. So can you share with me how that all happened? Was it just like, okay, this is it, we're done. I know you guys worked really hard playing hundreds of hundreds of shows to get to that point. Um, we we compiled a roughly around 30 songs for the record, and uh, it was all supposed to be one record, and then we ended up splitting it into two. The whole entire record was wrote in 1920s Speakeasy House in Hollywood land, and uh, we performed a lot of shows over there, and just kind of, we were picking the brains of all of our friends and fans that were coming out to these shows, and they were just uh, basement shows that we were putting on. And um, it just kind of turned into this thing that it, we, we needed to get a record deal and we needed to you know to push forward to make a record and we uh, boom room was just you know it's a compile of all the music that we've wrote probably since you know the band has begun and if not even sooner than that so you know it's the first half of what our whole lives were so uh we did that with james eha and really quick it was like a little bit under three weeks and it's just we recorded everything live tracking and uh, yeah, you know, trying to keep rock and roll alive. And the artwork that is included with your albums are, is done by you, correct? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> um, how long have you been an artist? Your your stuff is very unique. Is this just? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's. Uh... No, it's him. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay, seriously. All right, no, really, I am so sorry. You should just stop the interview right now. Um, how long have you been drawing? Uh. I don't know if since I, I've had a project in my mind since I was 15 to draw every day until I was good and I guess I am now so I'm 19 now so young young with an old soul and on this new album you already have the names of the song on your next album yeah. so it was already in your mind preconceived was, somehow well the artwork for the um, the inlay I I did a year before we even recorded anything um, and same with side B. I'm doing it now, and we haven't had all the names kind of picked yet. Mm -hmm. But I like guessing. <laughs> I, it's like spontaneous and like I don't know, philosophical, and it can kind of live in its own in its own soul. You know? Okay. All right. So we'll talk about one of the videos, uh, Do Mr. Doctor Man, which had kind of an American horror story feel. And I understand that it ties in also with uh, Sick Boy Soldier and Clockwork. Clockwork is my absolute favorite one. Um, are you guys going to be doing those type of videos for those other two songs to continue to tell the story? Yes. Yeah, see, the only thing with that is um, every film we write, our music videos we write, they're really expensive. They like come out to like two hundred fifty thousand dollars for like the whole thing, so we don't, so we can't do that. <laughs> um, but the conceptual story of Doctor Man and uh, Sick Boy Soldier and Clockwork is it's the patient becomes the doctor, or the doctor becomes the patient and loses his mind and clinically fine. Uh, but yeah, I think our dreams are a bit too elaborate for that to ever to come about, unless like. Tim Burton wants to do it, but that's far away. You never know. You can put anything out to the universe, man. <laughs> All right, so about your style, I see tons of people on your social media asking who styles you, who does your makeup, where do you get your clothes, can you do a tutorial? Do you want to touch on that for the people that... <laughs> First, for the stylist thing, if you're ever dressed as a band, you are not a band. If you have a stylist, or if you have someone telling you what to do, even if down to a label, you should be ashamed of yourself. If even then, a songwriter, you are not an artist. Uh, no, we dress ourselves. We, um, yeah, I don't know. It should be that way. It's funny when people ask me that because I'm like, 
you don't dress yourself? <laughs> How old are you? Yeah, like... Ever since I was three, I've been dressing myself. <laughs> Just did like you, mama taught me. Do you guys find stuff everywhere? Do you pick it up while you're on tour? Or do you have a specific site or a store that you like to go to? Emerson sleeps with older ladies, takes their clothing, and I take old grandma's jackets, and that's about it, you know? We, we did the whole thing that we've have had really cool and collective friends that are in the fashion world that has really helped out on, you know, the sense from John Vervedos to Ruffian, and they all helped out with clothing, but that gets really expensive, and even if they do give it to you for free, it's like you don't want to ruin it, because I, I'm playing Warp, Warp Tour in a Varvedo's jacket. It's like, not really that practical, but uh, yeah, we've got a little bit smarter. You find one-off pieces all the time in you know, really cool vintage shops, and it's crazy the prices that you can get these things for. You'll get like a vintage Dolce and Gambana blouse for like 10 bucks. So it's really cool. You just got to look for it and know what you're looking for. <laughs> The hidden gems. Well, I think that Sumerian found hidden gems with you guys. Um, I do not see you going anywhere anytime soon. I think you're exactly what this world needs. I just want to thank you for taking the time to meet with Capital Chaos. Is there anything else you would like to say to your fans or anybody that's going to watch this video? Yeah, and we, we appreciate you being a part of this whole family aspect that we have. Uh, the beautiful soldiers of the Royal Council. Little cult. <laughs> yes. And keep on keeping on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what this guy said. <laughs> what they said. All right, Capital Cast TV, and we're out. <laughs> okay.